Being about 100 hours into the game, what would I tell a beginner to the sim who had just completed the tutorials for the non-airline aircrafts and wanted to get started on flying the Airbus 320neo? What would be the bare minimum learning to be able to take off, fly the plane and land using the instrument landing system ILS? The tutorials in the game are pretty good for general aviation, but when it's time to start flying the Airbus 320 for example, the game tutorials are very limited. So I'll take you through what you need to be able to do to plan a route, take off and land using the ILA system, but I'll get into that more later. Generally the Airbus 320 is easier to fly compared to for example the Cessna 172 because it has a couple of systems that helps the pilot. One of them being the auto thrust system. Now this system helps you to keep the desired speed of the aircraft. So you simply just set the speed and then the system takes over and makes sure that you stay at that speed. You also have the fly-by-wire system, which in simple terms, just make sure that whatever you, direction you point the aircraft, this is what it's going to keep pointing at. Before we get into the game itself, um, I'm going to explain what the ILS system is. So the ILS system is a way where the autopilot can communicate with information from the runway you're approaching. So it's going to help you line up to the runway, but it's also going to help you get into the right approach and descent speed, which is pretty helpful when it's a bigger aircraft with, for example, the Airbus 320. So now let's get into the game and let's line up a plan and take us from Billund and to Copenhagen Airport. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm simply going to set Billund as the departure and Kastrup Copenhagen Airport as the arrival. And then I need to make sure that I've chosen the aircraft I want to fly, in this case the Airbus 320neo. I'm also going to make sure that I'm using instrument flight rules. And you're going to see the plan changes somewhat, but it's still not actually lined up with the runway correctly. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm also going to stay with clear skies just to make it simple. To make sure I line up with the runway I want to choose, I first have to select the runway I want to land on. And here I check the weather forecast and then figure out, okay, what runway actually makes it the best choice to fly in and land uh, with the headwind. In this case, it's runway 22R. Now I'm going to choose it using ILS 22R. And as you can see now, the approach changes. So I am directed correctly into land at that runway. Now we're set, so let's get on to the runway. Before we get into the aircraft itself, I'm going to explain what I'm going to go through. I'm going to check if the route looks okay, i.e. if the plan that we just made, if that actually translates into the aircraft. Then I'm going to make sure that the frequencies used for the radio communication between the aircraft's autopilot and the, the system on the ground is set up correctly. So when the aircraft comes in on the approach, it's able to communicate and we're able to use the ILS system. In some cases, this is actually not set up when we get into the aircraft. Now I'm in the aircraft and one of the first steps I always do is to check what is the initial altitude I need to be at. But before we do that, I need to turn up the lights a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. 
All right, now I'm going to go in and have a closer look at the, the dial for the altitude. And you're going to notice that it has a engage selected altitude speed. This is where you control the altitude of the aircraft and not what's been put into the uh, to the autopilot, which is engaged managed altitude. Here you're going to see that you can choose between changing with 100 or 1000. So if we click lower there, you can see that it changes between 100 and 1000. Now we need to get to 7000. So I just dial the, it up to 7000 and choose selected altitude mode. It's going to change down here and you can see that it says 7000 feet. Okay, so ready with the initial altitude. This is my radar map or my map of where I'm going. And this is a good place to check if the we're going the right direction and what the plan is. So I usually press the constraints button up here. This gives the information on this plan as to what is the correct altitude to be at. So if we click around, we can now see that the kind of um, magenta colors comes up and there you can see the altitude you're supposed to be on. Sometimes the ATC in this game doesn't give you the uh, the correct altitude. So this is a good way to check it. They also try to always enable the flight director and it tells you where you're supposed to point the aircraft in, in case you're controlling it yourself. This is the auto thrust button and this is going to turn on automatically once we start to roll down the runway. This is the autopilot button and once we're in the air and we're in a good direction, I'm going to turn that one on. Here you can see the speed that we are at. Then it's going to show the V1, which is where we want to rotate, i.e. start climbing or pulling up. I usually put the flaps into flaps three for this particular airport. We're going to also see the parking brake is on. And here I then go in and check the radio frequencies for the ILS approach. So I press the rad nav button. And as you can see here, it correctly identifies as ILS 22R, but there's no frequency indication for that approach, which means it's not going to be able to capture it. Now I happen to know the frequency of this runway. So I'm going to type that in. And there we go. Now we're ready to capture the ILS. Now at this point, we're pretty much set to be able to take off. Now, if we look at the throttle, we can see there are different indents. And what we want to be at is the one there. Now I'm going to turn off the parking brake and we're going to speed up and take it all the way up to this space. There we go. The auto thrust now is engaged and it's going to automatically get us to the speed where we want to be. So now it's just a matter of getting the aircraft and line it up correctly with the runway. Now we're going to watch for the V1, which is where we're supposed to rotate I pull up. And we're going to do that nice and easily and control and get to about a 10 degrees up. And there we go, pulling up. And once we're in a positive climb, we want to raise the landing gear. And as you can see, the aircraft is actually just on its own. It's going in the right direction. I'm not controlling it with my joystick. And I'm going to engage the autopilot. And now it's simply going to follow the route. Max gaming, one, one, two, three, contact, 
At this point, it's just a matter of following the instructions from air traffic control. And as I'm climbing, I want to make sure that as the aircraft speeds up, I slowly retract the flaps to get to zero flaps. I also want to make sure I pull this back into the CL indent. And this is where it's going to stay for the rest of the flight, including the landing. And there, we are more or less actually set. Just following the instructions from ATC, and it's going to take us all the way in through the descent and the way to the approach. So let's fast forward to that part. So here we are, we are at 11,000 feet and shortly ATC is going to take us to a lower altitude. And the reason we want to be at a lower altitude is for us to pick up the radio beacon. We need to be at, I think mostly it's around 3,000 feet or something along those lines. So usually the game's ATC takes us to that altitude where we need to be at. All right, we are now in our descent. We were at 11,000 feet and we're coming in for 3,000 feet. At this point, I am going to engage the ILS system. And I'm going to do that by pressing the button up here. When I do that, it's going to try to communicate with the radio beacon and capture information. And there you go. As you can see, there are now additional information and additional markers coming up. Among other things, it's going to tell us what frequency it is and how far away we are from the radio beacon. And it's also going to tell us what runway uh, the radio beacon we're communicating with is at. And now it's simply a matter of getting the aircraft following the route in and get us into the approach. And at some point, we're going to capture the what is called a glide slope. And we're going to get back to that once we're a little bit closer. Okay, so now we are a bit closer. We're coming up on our turn to line up with the runway. You'll see some new information come up on the board and we can now actually go into flaps one. There we go. And you're going to see some new information here. You can see this colored thing here. That is the glide slope. And this is it's going to come further and further down the closer we get to the to the runway. And what's going to happen is that the aircraft is going to capture that and start descending along with it. Now, as I'm going in, I'm going to get more and more flaps on, I'm going to reduce the speed. I find the the at this point in time, the game, the speed it comes into by default is way too high. So I'm going to, as I'm coming in, I'm going to slow it down all the way to about 150 knots as I'm also extending the flat, flaps more and more. Now I'm closer and as you can see, the Diamond now for the glide slope is closer, so I can turn on the approach system. It now locks on to the localizer, and you can see the glide slope is coming alive. And as you can see, the aircraft is now descending automatically. As it's following this diamond here. So now it's actually just 
a matter of still slowing down, but letting the aircraft guide its way all the way in. Now the aircraft is about set and ready for landing. I'm flying at about 145 knots. I got flaps fully extended. The gear is down, so it's now a matter of just letting the aircraft steer itself down. And when I hit about 500 feet, I'm gonna turn off the autopilot. Now down here, you can see the actual altitude according to the radio beacon. So when that hits about 500, I'm gonna turn off the autopilot and land the aircraft. When landing the aircraft, I'm gonna pull the throttle into idle when I'm at about 20 or 30 knots, but I'm also gonna try to maintain a good rate of descent so I don't land too fast. And the, that means coming in and just pitching the nose up ever so slightly. And then it's just a matter of letting the aircraft settle on the runway. And I'm also going to check the these lights out here as you saw in the tutorial. Okay, autopilot off. I now have control. And we're going to line up so the middle of the runway goes through the seat I'm sitting in. Don't try to align it with the entire aircraft. Just focus in on the seat you're sitting in and lining it up with that. Okay, pitching up ever so slightly. 40, 30, 20, and there we go, a nice and easy landing. Here I turn off the auto brake system, but as you can see, the these are pulled up here. So if I want to pull stop that, I just click the button again. And here, there you have it. That's basically it. So it's a matter of planning the, the flight in the flight planner, checking that the aircraft is ready, take off, fly the plane on autopilot, and simply telling the aircraft what to do. The only point in time where you actually control of the aircraft is only when you take off and in the last part of the landing. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you have other things you would like to see, please let me know and I'll make additional videos. Thank you.